Hey guys, Big Nate 84 here, and welcome to Live Sound 101 Schematics and Block Diagrams. In this video, uh, we will be talking about the differences between schematic diagrams and block diagrams, and I will be showing you two examples of schematic diagrams and three examples of block diagrams. Uh, when you're doing live sound, it is important to have a good understanding of your signal flow. And that's what we're talking about today when I'm mentioning these, mentioning these diagrams. Um, we're talking about signal flow. And basically, there are two ways I'd like you to think about it. Um, signal flow within a single piece of equipment, and then signal flow uh, between multiple pieces of equipment within an entire system. So in general, when we talk about a schematic diagram, we're talking about um, how the um, electricity flows inside of a specific device. And when we talk about block diagrams, it can be thought of in two ways. Um, a simplified version of a schematic with less detail, or a block diagram could represent uh, signal flow within an entire system. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to explain that a little better in this video as we dive into some examples. Okay, let's take a look at the first example. This is a schematic diagram of a Neumann U89 condenser microphone. Um, and schematics, as you can see, show signal flow on the component level within an electronic device. Um, they show how signal is routed inside this device. And it also shows various values of electronic components. Um, this, this type of diagram is great for troubleshooting and fixing broken equipment. Every individual electronic component is mapped out. Uh, potentiometers, diodes, resistors, capacitors, um, amplifiers, switches, that, that sort of thing. I'm not going to get too far into explaining the different symbols and what they mean. Um, this, is, this is just an introductory course, so I just want you to be familiar with it, but um, know um, that's what we're talking about here. So as we look at this diagram, uh, a general rule of thumb is that signal flows from left to right. And this is true for schematic diagrams and block diagrams. Of course, um, there are exceptions to every rule, but in general, signal flows from left to right. So if we look all the way at the left of this diagram here, of the Neumann U89 uh, schematic diagram, we will see this right here. Now, I am not an expert when it comes to electronic components. I know enough to be dangerous, but this, this represents the element of the microphone. So this is the part of the microphone um, where the sound uh, energy, the acoustic energy, um, is transduced, is converted to electrical energy. And at the heart of it, we have a capacitor. This particular microphone has, has a switch where you can change the pickup pattern of the microphone. And if we zoom in over here, you can see these pickup patterns represented in this um, multi-throw uh, switch. Okay, let's take a look at um, another example of a schematic diagram. Now this diagram is for a Fender Bandmaster Model 5E7, uh, a guitar amplifier. And as you can see, um, the input side is over here on the left. This is, this is where the guitar would actually be plugged into the amplifier and you can follow the signal through all the electronics and you can see all the different values now this is a major difference between a block diagram and a schematic diagram is that you can actually see um, you know this is this is this is uh, you know an 820 ohm uh, resistor and and this is a uh, you know 100 K ohm resistor so these types of diagrams are actually great for troubleshooting in case a component uh, goes. The other thing, well, the other reason why it's important to understand schematic diagrams is that symbols on here will correspond to switches, knobs, and buttons on the actual amp. So to understand how to make uh, proper use of an amplifier, um, it helps to understand the schematic diagram. All right, let's look at some block diagrams now. This is a block diagram of a mixing board. Um, this is a 
a Mackey SR324 VLZ Pro block diagram. And you'll notice some differences right off the bat. You'll notice some similarities too. Um, signal, uh, once again, flows from left to right. Um, so you can see the inputs are on the left and the outputs are on the right. And in the middle, this mess of spaghetti uh, is, is how the signal is routed. And one of the major differences you will notice there's not the same nitty gritty detail as a schematic diagram. Values for every component are not listed here. This is more of a theoretical flow. It shows the major routing, the important stuff that you really need to know without going into, you know, how many ohms is this resistor. Um, and sometimes you will have uh, symbols like this symbol, this triangle here is a symbol for an amplifier, and this 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 resistor right here with an arrow that means that there's a a potentiometer there. That means the the arrow um, that that means you can adjust the resistance here and, and change the volume so that that amplifier is adjustable. So that that would mean that this this right here is a some sort of volume knob. This is actually the first volume stage or first gain stage uh, once the uh, audio enters the soundboard. So the trim knob um, would correspond to this symbol in the block diagram. And then after the, the trim knob, or um, it could be also uh, called the mic preamp, uh, we've got the insert send. So this is a direct out uh, right after the preamp. And you can maybe send this channel to a recording interface or some sort of recording device or you could send it to a processor like a compressor or a reverb and then using a Y cable have that um, signal processed using outboard gear and then input right back into the same insert and then the next thing the EQ section where you can adjust the EQ and just moving over you will notice the mute switch uh, you'll notice the fader, the channel fader. You'll notice the pan knobs, the potentiometers there that control whether the signals pan to the left or to the right. And then you've got your routing section. So this is this is where you can assign uh, a specific channel to uh, a submix, sub one and two, sub three and four, uh, or the master left and right bus. And when we talk about signal routing. Uh, we are talking about buses. So a bus is is any um, any place within a soundboard that you c that signal can be routed and summed together and combined with other signals. This this is where the magic happens. This is where signals actually get summed together. All right, let's look at the next block diagram. Uh, this one's much more simple. Maybe I should have started with this one, but this is a block diagram of a bass amplifier, a Galleon Kruger 400RB210. So, we take a look at this. We'll notice differences between the schematic. There are not values uh, assigned to every component. I mean, there's some numbers here. There's there's some things that we see uh, a 10 dB pad. We talked about pads before. Um, that will basically reduce the volume. Uh, by 10 dB. So whatever you're inputting, if, if the signal's too hot, and no matter how much you turn down the gain, if it's still too hot, you can push the pad, and that's going to bump everything down by 10 dB. Um, so we've got the input. We've got the pad. Uh, we've got some light-emitting diodes. You can tell, you can see this little picture of the diode. It actually looks like a diode, and the arrow coming out of it means that it is light-emitting. And then we've got the tuner, so you don't have to run your bass through a tuner and then into the amp, but you can actually plug a tuner uh, into this tuner output. And there's also a tuner mute button. That's a switch right there. And we've got the direct out. So this bass amplifier is, is really convenient for live sound people because you don't need to run the bass player through a DI. Uh, it has a direct out, a balanced output, um, an XLR output uh, built into the amplifier, so that makes it that makes it pretty handy. I like that. All right, let's take a look at one more example of a block diagram. Now, this one, as you can see, is a little bit different. Um, it's actually made of blocks. Go figure. You could have a block diagram with symbols that represent things like 
We mentioned the triangle represents an amplifier. The little squiggly line represents a resistor. A diode is represented by uh, you know a symbol that actually looks like a diode with an arrow coming out of it. We know it's a light emitting diode. But you can also have a very simplified block diagram. This is a block diagram of an entire system. So this is just a basic system that I created. Um, I guarantee if you work in live sound or you volunteer in live sound, um, you'll be able to relate to at least some part of this block diagram. This is a very generic setup, but a lot of people use something very similar to this. So let's take a look at it. We've got a microphone, and that's plugged into a multi-channel snake uh, input number one. And we've got a guitar plugged into a direct box, and that direct box is plugged into multi-channel snake input two. And we've got a keyboard also going to a direct box, going to snake channel three, and a bass amp going to snake channel four. And that's down on the stage. Now let's just say uh, this snake is a 300 foot snake. So at the other end, 300 feet away, we will have channels one, two, three, and four, uh, plugged into channels one, two, three, and four on the mixer. So then we're going to have a left output and a right output. And then that's gonna go to an EQ, so we can do some master EQing. Now this is where we would EQ for the room. And then, of course, we've got the two channel amplifier, which is connected to a left speaker and a right speaker. And now down here we've got aux one and two, which also would, uh, be going through an EQ to compensate for uh, the room and, and, and uh, how the room is going to affect the sound and you want to be able to have some control over that so you'll run through an EQ and uh, some people like to do something called ringing out a monitor and so you might want to have some some drastic EQ changes just for your monitor mixes um, you know to to mitigate feedback and um, get the uh, the volume up at a high uh, level for your performers uh, without experiencing feedback but we can we can talk more about that in another video and next we've got a two channel amplifier and that's going to monitor one and monitor two and uh, monitor one and monitor two are, are just uh, speakers and tip you know you can think of them as it maybe a floor wedge uh, a speaker sitting on the floor facing up at the performer at a 40 Five degree angle, something of that nature. Uh, when we say monitors, that's that's what we're talking about. A speaker that's that's designed to provide sound reinforcement for a performer. Now, this this all might seem intimidating if you're looking at it for the first time, but you know, after you study it for a while and you, you really immerse yourself in the idea of signal flow and you really think about what's happening uh, at different points in the signal chain, it, it, it's going to click eventually, it's going to start to make sense. This might seem like a foreign language, especially to a, a beginner, um, but uh, I, I challenge you to, uh, you know, open up the uh, user manual and, and look up the block diagram and, and see what's happening to your signal so that you can be in control of it. This is one tool that you should have in your tool belt, and that is the ability to read a schematic diagram and at least understand uh, you know, how block diagrams work. All right, guys, when I get talking about live sound, sometimes I carry on. Sorry if this video is a little bit long, um, but hopefully this introduced something new to you that maybe you hadn't thought of before, and hopefully I did a good job explaining um, when it would be important to uh, use a schematic diagram and when it's important to use a block diagram. And just to recap, if you wanna understand um, a, a system or a piece of equipment at a glance really quickly, a block diagram is what, what you want. Um, on the other hand, if you need all that nitty gritty detail for troubleshooting or fixing a broken device, you're gonna wanna reach for the schematic diagram. So that's, that's kind of the difference between the two and both are useful for different things. And um, I hope this video got you thinking more about signal flow and why it's important for a live sound person to really be able to understand signal flow. Thanks for watching.